Welcome to the Defense and Airspace Report. I'm Vago Maradian from the Farnborough International Air Show outside London, and we're honored to have with us Michael Fallon, Britain's Defense Secretary. Sir, thanks for joining us. Britain has historically been a great global power, uh, but there is concern among your allies that in the wake of the, e the vote to e leave the EU, that Britain's finite uh, political, civil, military, and diplomatic bandwidth will basically be focused inwardly uh, to negotiate exit agreements, new new relationships, rather than being focused globally on solving very, very big problems. Um, how are you going to ensure that that bandwidth remains, that while you're doing these tough negotiations, Britain is still going to be a global power? Well, look, you saw just last week our commitments at the Warsaw Summit to put more troops onto the eastern border of NATO in Poland and the Baltic states. We've announced additional troops for Iraq. We've announced an uplift in our troops to Afghanistan. The referendum result has no impact on the country. We'll be leaning into our alliances and our key partnerships, including the United States, even more strongly. And the proof of that is what is being announced here at Farnborough uh, this week. Uh, purchases of maritime patrol aircraft, the very latest attack helicopters, and next week I'll be asking Parliament to uh, endorse the renewal of our nuclear deterrent. This is certainly not Britain turning its back on the world, on the contrary. And, but is it going to be a challenge, though, to make sure that folks have that focus and have the bandwidth available? Because you guys, you know, like every senior staff, is busy enough as it is without new challenges being piled on. But we have now a rising defence budget. Uh, went up in April and is going up every April of the rest of this uh, parliament. We've had a very strong uh, strategic defence review just before Christmas. We have parliament endorsing military action in Syria and Iraq. Whatever happened in the referendum, Britain is stepping up to its responsibilities around the world and will be working even harder with our key allies, including the United States. Question on the value of the pound. It's dropped 13 um, percent since the 23rd. That makes everything 13 percent technically more expensive, especially for high ticket items from the United States. What sort of trade-offs will you have to consider if that trend continues financially? Well, it's only a couple of weeks since the referendum, so we don't yet know where sterling is going to settle down. And like any large commercial organisation, we take precautions in our purchasing against uh, currency fluctuations. So I think it's too early to say. Um, the weapon systems that are coming online are very, very key. They were in the Strategic Defense uh, and uh, Strategic Defense and Security Review. Um, talk to us a little bit both. I mean, in some of the questioning here from the British reporters, there's been questions because it's a foreign military sales deal. Uh, the key was to deliver affordable capability, but there's a concern about UK suppliers and their role on the program. When you make such a decision, what are the kind of trade-offs that you're looking at to make sure that there's a role for UK industry while at the same time satisfying, you know, scratching the itch that you have? It's it's always a balance, but first of all, it has to be absolutely the best value for the taxpayer, and it has to be best value for our armed forces themselves. It has to be equipment, or plane or airframes that we know are pr have proven capabilities and will suit our armed forces for the next uh, 10, 20, 30 years. So those are the judgments we make. Now, Boeing, uh, who we've announced these orders for today, have given us very firm commitments about increased opportunities for the British supply chain. So there is plenty of work there for small for the smaller British companies to get in on these contracts and to make sure that there are jobs here that benefit as a result. UK is America's closest partner. You've been read in on both the third offset initiative as well as the innovation initiatives. You talked to Josh Carter about that. Are you looking at a division of labor where UK and the US, as they did during the Cold War, divvy up certain responsibilities and ideas that they break off and work on? Well, there are investments we have in common, the common missile compartment for our nuclear submarines, but we too have an innovation strategy that was in the five yearly defense review, and I'll be making an announcement about that uh, uh, next month. Um, we can learn from the way the United States has encouraged smaller high-tech companies that haven't previously operated in the defense sector to come into defense and, and use their applications to help, uh, to help them military as well as the civilian. We'll be learning from that and we have a program of cooperation between us and the United States to make sure that we both benefit from that. Sir, thanks so much for spending time with us and best of luck in Washington. Thank you.